The NWA drew another disappointing 3,800 fans to the Omni on November 8th, and it was supposed to be headlined by Ric Flair versus Ron Garvin in a non-title match. Instead, it ended up being Garvin and Flair each separately squashing a pair of jobbers and handicap matches as a Starcade warm-up. <laughs> this last part... <laughs> sure, we'll go with that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this last part I don't quite understand. It says fin- fans were hissing at Garvin. I, I don't get that one. Like, literally hissing? Like a cat? Like snakes. Like Okay, because some people use the word hissing like crying, whining, complaining. But I, uh, maybe that's what Dave meant. I don't know. Cause like the person that like in, was interpreting it, they were like, they even put, they were like, uh, like snakes. Like, what? I don't get it either way. Uh, yeah. So 3,800 fans to their version of Madison square garden, the Omni. How I many did it hold? Uh, it held 17,500. Jeez. How do you win a quarter? Yeah, it was like a piss hole in a snowbank. Good Lord. Uh, yeah, so that sucked. I realized it was a house show in a non-title match. But good Lord, man. Dude, was in the 80s, so house show, Garvin. what was that? So that's you can't use that as an excuse, really. Yeah. I don't know. And I guess it was good that they didn't do the match, but whatever. Maybe Flair's chest needed a night off. Because he talked about when uh, he went around the loop with Garvin doing matches. He said he would have to rub salve into his chest like every night because it would be all cut up. <laughs> that's uh, that's a little rough, man. I can imagine that's like if you take on uh, Gunther nowadays. Gunther. <laughs> Although there's a lot of grumbling from talent in the NWA about leaving after Starcade due to poor houses lately, the real concern has become the plummeting TV ratings. Literally, as soon as Ron Garvin won the world title, their syndicated package dropped out of the top 15 completely and now is behind. Wow, AW- that is bad. Right. And it's now behind both the AWA and David McLean's POW, which is powerful. Was it? Yeah, powerful women of wrestling. Yeah. Uh, basically, Crockett bought the UWF uh, specifically to boost syndicated programming and now a whole lot of stations are about to drop him completely. You can make a variety of excuses for house shows being up or down, but if your TV ratings suddenly drop from 4 to 16 or lower, <laughs> it means that the people are not enjoying your product. I Very say, good! Yeah, I know. Uh, 1 plus 1 equals 2? Uh, but yeah. I could mess. If that's a serious number, they were number four. And as soon as Garvin became the champion, they dropped to number 16. What the hell, man? <sighs> People yeah. hated him that effing bad? Pretty Good bad. Lord. I, I can't think. The only person I can think of to somewhat compare that to in WWE in recent memory would be like Jinder Mahal. When he became the champion, <laughs> like yeah. nobody gave a damn. Nobody. It was like. Why? And he was a champion for a while. It was like, what, six months? Like, what? Yeah, about, I want to yeah. say July to November. And he didn't have one good match that entire time. I am confident. Not true. That. When he lost the title to AJ Styles, it was pretty good. <laughs> well, the, I, I, the the ending part was pretty damn good. <laughs> uh, yeah. But the match was know. good, though. I remember it was, it was in England on SmackDown, so it was good. But it's AJ Styles. Yeah, right. Well, he could get a good match out of a broom. So he got a somewhat acceptable match out of uh, chinless James Ellsworth. So there you go. 